When you have an ASP.NET Core Web API project, you can use JWT or JSON Web Token to implement authentication and authorization. And in order to manage your access to your backend resources, you need to send this token to the backend with your request headers. So normally we have two different ways to test our backend project, Postman or Swagger. With Postman, it's easy and I have another tutorial and in that tutorial I showed you how you can do this using Postman. The link of it is in the video description and also we can use Swagger. But the problem is we don't have access to the request headers in Swagger in a standard implementation of it. We have the Swagger in ASP.NET Core projects but we cannot send token with it. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can do this and how you can send a token with your request headers to the backend using ASP.NET Core Web API Swagger. And let's go and see how we can do this. Well, this is the project I'm going to use in this tutorial and you can download this project from my GitHub repo. The link of it would be in the video description. This is a simple ASP.NET Core Web API project that related to my one of my other tutorials and also I put the link of that tutorial in the video description so you can see it. And that's it. So I can simply go here and I clone this project using this uh, copy URL to clipboard. And that's it. Let's go and use it. Well, I downloaded the project from the GitHub and opened it in Visual Studio 2022. And I can simply open it and I right click on the project and I use build to be sure that everything is okay. And because I have this project in my system, I don't need to have any migration. But if you want to use it for the first time, you can use migrate uh, commands, but it's not important. And in this tutorial, our focus is just on the swagger. So let's run the project and see what do we have until now. Well, this is it. This is a normal swagger and I assume that you are familiar with the swagger. So you can see that I can have register, login and the other functionalities. For example, I can log in with a user. So Let's try it. For example, I have a user of Mamad Tahiri 1 and also a password of this. And if I execute, well, you can see that this is a successful uh, login and I have the e success of true and I will receive a token. So let's use this token and we need to send this token to the back end to have access to the resources that needs authentication for example here you can see that this is a test uh, get user role which is uh, a simple get method of asp.net core project so if i say execute it will receive 401 and it says that we need to log into website to have access to it so we can use postman but in this tutorial we need to send the uh, token to the backend using the swagger normally we don't have it but we can add it simply. So let's go and add it to our project. So I go to the program.cs and this is the heart of our project uh, control panel, some sort of it. And here we have access to everything we want. For example, here I have the add the database and then adding identity. They are all from my previous tutorial and you can find them in the uh, video description if you want to see that tutorial, but it's not important for us. After this, we have this add authentication and JWT BRR. We add them to the services and then we have the inject of the uh, services, which is a dependency injection part. So let's press enter here. And after this injection, we have the pipeline and we build our app and then we, uh, we can use some other middlewares and that's it. So before this uh, pipeline and after injecting our services, I want to add that uh, headers to my swagger so let's do this how we can do this it's too easy we can use the builder dot services dot add endpoint so we use builder dot services dot add endpoint api explorer and that's it so we will add the api explorer and endpoints to our services and after that we can add another one so i use builder dot services dot add swagger generator or add swagger gen and here i need to have some configuration so here i will pass some options to it and then i open a curly brace to have some options so 
for the first one I use options dot add security definition for the security definitions we can add a bearer to it and after that we can add a new Microsoft dot open API dot models dot open API security schema and let's open a curly brace here to add some fields to it for example we can have different configuration for example for the name I want to use authorization that's it and after that I can have in so I want to use header so I use Microsoft dot open API dot models dot parameter location dot header so we have query past the cookies here I want to use header so I will send my token in request header that's it and we can have a description to show to user we, you will see this description soon so here I want to use this is it so we need to send it this is just a description to help our users we say please send enter your token with this format bearer and a space then the token and after that let's have a type for it so for the type we can again use microsoft.openapi.models.security schema type dot api key and then let's have a bearer format for it which would be jwt and also let's have an schema which would be bearer so this is it this is for the add security definition in these options and after this we can have add another options for example we can have options dot add security so uh, on the top we had add security definition now we can use add security requirements and here we can have a new microsoft dot open api dot models dot open api security requirement you can see that we typing just the first letter of each section i have access to it open api security requirement and let's open a curly brace to add some options to it and again you need to open another curly brace here and here we can use a new open api security schema and open a curly brace to add some options to it for example we can add a name and for the name we can use a bearer and then we can have in so we can have a parameter location dot header and also for the reference we can use a new open api reference and here we need to open another curly brace here and we use the id of bearer and also a type of reference type dot security schema that's it and after that we can use a new list of string this is it exactly like the documentation of it so this is it. I think everything is okay now let's stop our project and start it again and check if it's work or not well this time you can see that we have this uh, icon here which is a lock and here you can see that we can add token to them and also we can have a general token here on the top so I have this authorized and if I click on it you can see that I have the bearer API key and here we have the description of please enter your token with this format bearer your token and that's it and the name is authorization and it is in header so let's copy one of them so let's use login again and I want to have a token so let's say I'm at yek copy paste so using a username and a password I will receive a token I can send it so let's go here to the authorization and here we need to type bearer a space and I paste my token authorized well now you can see that we are authorized so let's go and check this get user role again to see do we have any or not oh yes you can see that we received 200 and we received the list and this list is not important we are just checking the access to it so if I log out from here can I have access to this if I execute I will receive 401 and it says that I don't have access to it what if I use an invalid token for example I use a bearer a space and something authorized 
close do i have access to it let's execute no 401 that's good and it says that we don't have any access to it that's good so again if i go here and i log out and i use brr space and paste my token again and close and execute well 200 so you can see that now we are receiving the uh, list from the back end and we have access to it and if we check it here inside of this curl you can see that we are sending this header to the back end which is authorization equals to bearer and a space and then this token that is sending with our request headers to the back end and that's it i hope this video helps you have a good time and goodbye